Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us is Dan Burton. He's the CEO of Health Catalyst to discuss how the company is using data and analytics to help support the U.S. healthcare system respond to COVID-19. Dan, it's great to have you with us on Trade Talks. Welcome to the show. And tell us a bit about Health Catalyst. Thanks for having me, Jill. I appreciate this opportunity. So Health Catalyst is a leading provider of data and analytics technology and services to healthcare organizations. And there are three primary components to the solution that we provide to these healthcare organizations. First is a data platform that's designed to help these health system clients integrate data in a flexible, open and scalable platform so that they can then use that data to do this, the second piece or second component of our solution, which is analyze that data. We provide a layer of analytics applications that are designed to help these health system organizations understand where there are opportunities for improvement. And they could be clinical, financial, or operational opportunities for improvement. And when they glean those insights about those improvement opportunities, that's when we also provide the third component of our solution, which is our services expertise. When those clients wanna to work to measurably improve, we bring domain experts in those clinical, financial, and operational areas to help them actually improve. Dan, how is Health Catalyst mobilized to support the needs of the US healthcare system as it responds to COVID-19? Well, we have seen a significant need in the, uh, and uptick in the use of data and analytics to respond to COVID-19. So first of all, as it relates to our data platform, we've never seen more utilization of that data in the data platform to understand financial, operational, uh, and clinical uh, components of the COVID-19 specific solution and then be in a position to analyze and act accordingly. Let me just give a couple of examples. So early in the COVID-19 outbreak, um, many of our health system clients were trying to trace or track those who had tested positive for COVID-19 within their healthcare setting. They needed to know what rooms they've been in and which staff they've interfaced with so that they can then take specific action. And they were often doing this very manually with sticky notes and, and trying to track this uh, without the benefit of technology. We use the data in the data platform, coupled with the right analytics applications capability to automate that process through a, a patient and staff tracker uh, that allowed them to quickly understand exactly uh, which rooms those, uh, those individuals had been in and what staff they'd interfaced with by automating that process, they became much more efficient and much more quick uh, in response to COVID-19. Likewise, when you think about capacity planning, that's incredibly important early in an outbreak, as well as with regards to planning for the future. We uh, uh, launched a capacity planning solution that enables uh, both our health system clients and any healthcare organization to really plan specifically as it relates to their staff as it relates to supplies, PPE and ventilators and other uh, critical items from an asset perspective to make sure that they're in real time responding really effectively as well as in the days, weeks and months ahead when the crisis is at hand and also very importantly, planning for the future. And, and the last example I would give would be in that category of planning for the future. We're seeing now a trend with many of our health system clients that We've successfully gotten through the early peak of COVID-19 uh, and a lot of the work associated with making sure we had the capacity to respond to that peak involved um, very significant decisions to reschedule or cancel those elective procedures, which caused a very major, very significant financial hit on most of these health systems. And so now most of them are trying to understand how can we recover uh, in the most effective way. And we have a, a tool and a solution set that helps them scenario plan around which elective procedures to introduce at, at which time and in which sequence to the greatest, greatest impact from a clinical perspective as well as from a financial perspective so that, so that these health systems can recover uh, in the most effective way. So those are a couple of examples. 
So Dan, when we get to the other side of COVID-19, it seems as if the way the U.S. healthcare system operates is really going to change uh, because in addition to science really being the taking charge in the media, it's really the healthcare technology that's been one of the, the bigger stories as we navigate through this pandemic. Yeah, I agree. And, and unfortunately, one of the challenges that has been uncovered as part of COVID-19 is that we have a, a digital patchwork rather than uh, an ideal digital infrastructure in place today, both at the individual health system level, that's often the case, but included in that is at the state and the national level, where we, we haven't had a robust digital infrastructure to collect the data that we need to visualize that data uh, as quickly as possible. And I think as we, as we prepare for the future, as we think about planning for the future, one of the encouraging elements that we're excited to see is an increased realization that it's very, very important for us to strengthen that digital infrastructure, that data infrastructure, so that we can make more precise decisions moving forward, rather than finding ourselves in situations where, because we lack the data and the confidence in that data, we have to make more broad decisions uh, using more blunt instrument approaches rather than more precise approaches that, that could be more effective in the future. All right, Dan, thanks so much for joining us on Trade Talk. Thank you. And thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.